trick. This quizzer, I throw the small tricks. I should look into it. There's survey tool. Quad trick, yeah. Yeah. So survey monkey and the small trick. There isn't anyone that is doing the same exact thing with the social platform that we have, social network platform, plus the uh, fun tools that we're providing to companies. There, nobody's doing it simultaneously. But uh, I would say Playboss is a big one uh, because they do provide their clients um, with fun ways, which they have some things that we don't. We have things, things that they don't, like the GeoSlip, for example. Um, I would say today was because their social presence is also high on their own Facebook and Twitter. Uh, other than that, Epicenter, uh, but it's a subscription type of model that they have. Um, so those are the main ones that I know of. Why are you concentrating on the US market if you have this? I'm sure you have a lot to grow in the future. Um, yeah, I'm sure Turkey will grow further, and we have plans to extend into Europe and Asia also, but US is where everything happens. Where it begins, where you have a, a, a solid surgeon uh, in, in your country, right? In Turkey? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. We're very well known amongst the uh, highest circulating newspapers, banks. Um, it's kind of trading US market with a, with a product, I mean, uh, which is, you know, it's, it's a very useful product, right? But uh, there's a lot of players on the market. I, you know, I don't know them, but I'm there are, no, definitely. Uh, we are unique in Turkey, but you're right, we have competition here. Um, but we're establishing partnerships already. We're, we're um, doing the same exact thing we did in Turkey um, to create our social platform and create that user base, millions of people, and, and building partnerships with uh, publishers. Like, we're knocking on doors, every door we can find. So, a lot of players in this space. specific products and then they, and they, those people say, yeah, I'm interested in that product. And then they even you know, ma mail that product and then weeks later they're, they're serving that producing the product. You know, like real, real you know, light touch um, types of surveys. Mm -hmm. um, and the incentive, of course, for them is they get a free product or um, some of these sites also will pay and be participant for your clients. Kind of like focus, focus, mm -hmm. focus. Yeah. Um, do you have to think about that? Not yet, we have not, uh, but we could definitely look into it. I think that would be more still in the serving field um, rather than increase online shopping engagement. Uh, but that's something that's technically you can look at, which that has not been a priority. You get grants and they ask you, that's great, I have this product, we're going to launch it, um, but you want to hear a feedback yep. about the design, you know, co create with, with uh, consumers. Any other yeah, final yeah. final question? Just thinking back up, gentlemen, uh, kind of about how you make money. You said you share that uh, revenue from uh, as as you would with the with the publisher. Um, but my question was uh, in terms of that. Right now, we already have you know digital <coughs> ad, digital advertising. Um, how does what you offer compare to that in terms of um, in terms of return on investment? Uh, well, the sponsor calls or the money that they make from ads is just one part of the value we provide to the company. Um, I think their priority is more to increase engagement, pretty much, and to attract more traffic, uh, yes, to their own website, and to, to be able to offer something new uh, that others, their own competitors, don't yet. So not so much about CTAs or you know anything like that. Actual things, engagement. Yes. So uh, I think it's it's important for you to um, because I don't know if you guys know, but they're not. I don't know if you mentioned this. They're not going after like the small company who wants to do a small poll uh, 
you know, and pay ten dollars. That's not the model you're going after now. Right. I guess you're going after bigger brands where they, they could get like a custom hand holding Absolutely. process yes. to get their pro their their fully custom. It's not only about the poll, but what you can do there after with like the for data. Example, you, good point. Wall Street Journal, uh, we're in talks with them, and if we can get this going, uh, a poll result turns into a news article in itself. So we help them create content after the poll also. So it's not just the click through rate, the time spent. Those are great benefits, but it's just that for a big publisher like New York Times, Wall Street Journal, we also provide content. Uh, so I'm going to ask a question on your behalf. I guess part of your processes right now, and I know because we, we had a slight conversation, is getting through the decision makers and getting in front of the right person. Would you say that's that's uh, one of the that's things right now? Yeah. Any anybody recommend anything in the room to? Yes. Mirabs is one of them. <laughs> okay. <Checked>. Use a poll. <laughs> No, actually, uh, that I, it's a very good question. I share the same type of uh, uh, you know tech prospecting and making sure that uh, the message is known, uh, making sure that you're using the right vehicle to get to that to those people. Uh, old timers list seems to be okay, mm -hmm. uh, but I think you have to know somebody. I'm not sure. Uh, I have somebody recommended. I might probably discuss that briefly in uh, in a presentation. Okay. Yeah. I guess obviously the AMA, right? American mm -hmm. Marketing Association, uh, local groups. Uh, so meet them face to face yeah. is the best way. Yeah. Oh, for, for me it was always, mm -hmm. always in the face to face. Uh, like we work, for instance, like our, my, our company was a, almost a, a pivot from what we were doing. We were a marketing pro for, uh, for fashion, and then, uh, but we were delivering email messages. Uh, but from prior, uh, previously engaged clients like the New York Times and Connie Nass and Hirsch and all of those, uh, we started doing, they started using our platform for that reason. But, you know, just your role of from LinkedIn and okay. the people that you've, you've, that you've worked with. LinkedIn but it's definitely. always an issue. It's, it's you know, mm -hmm. I'm, not I'm working with clients. You know, just get in front of the pros yeah, prospecting process. That's cool. a BD question. I mean, mm -hmm. that kind of No, I agree. Absolutely. Right? Right. Yeah, you, you, wanna, uh, you wanna connect. We we through our system we connect to members. So we connect to clients. We connect to people who have already opted in to, to receive that message. Yes. And even those people say, hey, I was just talking talk to you, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just saying, uh, the person opted into an email and he says, I didn't get this it's spam. And they, and you know, I, the question is you know, how do we process that person? Right? Uh, but but we have to want to try them. But even though that he, he did, he did opt in. Yeah, yeah. Did opt in. Uh, but it, 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 when I sent out to, let's say, prospect a person through email, most of the time people just believe. Yeah. Cool. Well, I, 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 real connection that has to be. But it really depends if you're getting, if you want to get three customers per month, is one process. If you want to get 20 customers per month. That's a completely different process because how much networking and how much face-to-face -face meeting can you do? But when you're looking for big-time clients, and first you got to get that person. Right, the, right. The big head it's a, in marketing. It's a process, right? exactly. By the time you get that person, their email, how many, you know, that person is so busy, you're going to get an email that's just pitching. Like if you're, like I found it, I don't know about everybody else here, but I found that you put like a long message together. And say, hey, here's my company, here's what no, you're doing. That's the first, yeah. that the leak comes like See. these within the, the first two seconds, hmm. right? You get a short message, but always referencing some events, some something, but a pitch is hard right now. Yeah. yeah. Not yet, that's coming. Uh, you're right, testimonials do immediately increase trust and interest. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
It's a Voltio, check it out. All right, so uh, we'll come to the topic of the day, multi-channel, multi-touch, omni-channel marketing. Uh, so from, I, I guess few of you here can provide input, but uh, this is a round table. So please feel free to interrupt at any given time. If you have anything to add to my slides, please do so. Uh, and because we are not a, there's not as many of us here today, there's an opportunity for us to speak more. Um, just to get this out of the way. So let's start by talking about the evolution of marketing from the get-go. You know, so in the 1980s and now c continuing from uh, the buzz of iPhone, and this is their 1980s, 96 uh, Apple 2G ad. Uh, you know, obviously we started with TV, we had radio, we had uh, the tra traditional trade shows, uh, billboards, uh, mailing, traditional mailing. How many of you still get traditional mail at home still right it's a <laughs> right so uh, there I mean there is a huge industry that's still in the works these days but obviously it's it's one of those 20 30 year old kind of uh, approaches uh, coming to the 1990s uh, again with the with Apple's awesome campaigns <clears throat> now you started seeing full-blown email marketing campaigns, websites has evolved, have evolved to a little bit of a, you know, more, more of a marketing front because people are start, starting checking out bigger companies online. Uh, search engines started to emerge. Uh, how many of you here remember the first search engine? Uh, what was it called? It ask. ask, and that was another one. InfoSync. InfoSync, yeah. There were a few of them. As Jeeves, right? So, Alta Vista, that was the one I used to use uh, back at that time. So, uh, online displays and cable, cable ads, right? Uh, coming to the 2000s, 2000s, now carry on from the previous channels. The previous channels are still being used, but now you have SMS marketing, PPC campaigns, landing pages, video marketing, affiliate marketing content marketing, social media, mobile reputation, uh, you know, and community marketing, SEO, SEM, uh, PR campaigns, and the list can grow, but that's, that's, these are the mainstream. And I don't know how many of you had this uh, computer. Anybody here used that laptop before? Sorry. Okay. Uh, pretty cool, uh, uh, a catchy, catchy headline there. And uh, coming to today, now we have social media, let's call it 3.0 because you have so many different channels from it's beyond Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you also have um, you know, new things emerging every day. Uh, things are dying. Uh, things that we thought are going to be living forever like Twitter. Uh, I, I, I haven't seen a lot of engagement on Twitter as much as we should besides just spam messages. Uh, wondering where that's going. You have push notification, browser push, um, event marketing continuing, uh, growth hacking, IoT of, uh, of things. Uh, um, we discussed this last last session. Actually, we well we use technology. Uh, there's many ways to do uh, growth hacking. So just to take one example, you can build a small sub tool, offer for free for people to use, and you can drive traffic through it. For instance, you can provide. Um, uh, a website greater, like uh, 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 HubSpot. HubSpot did that initially. That's, can I? Yeah, of course, please. Uh, round table. <laughs> That's engineering is not good. Right. Okay, classic growth hack is kind of cheating the system. Airbnb did it with Craigslist. Everybody know about this one? Yeah. Yeah. So everybody knows Airbnb. They found a way that they could actually embed in their sign up email, like you, you put up a listing, and there was a way that they could auto create a Craigslist listing from the, the registration email of their new users. So you get the email saying, hey, you just put a listing on Airbnb, good on you, welcome to the team. Click this one thing, one button, and you're going to have a Craigslist post automatically. 
Yeah. Now, obviously, Craze has figured that out, but not after Airbnb generated a crap ton of traffic. That's what that yeah, and there, there are many forms of it. Actually, we discussed Airbnb last time. You, you weren't listening. <laughs> uh, but Airbnb, before they did that, they started by offering free photo shoots uh, locally. Right. So that was a different way of growth hacking their way in. And every company can use different things. You can have, you know, millions of landing page drafted, pages drafted to get traffic back. You can have, uh, you know, black... Um, black hat kind of SEO techniques where you have spam forms of links that's not doesn't work anymore you know so there's multiple ways to do it I guess today it's doing whatever it takes from an engineering non engineering wise to grow fast ethically let's just put ethically at the end um, but there's many ways to do it so but they consider it marketing because marketing marketers dabble with this uh, a lot so yeah Location marketing, again, there's more things here, but these are where uh, some of the things that are, have been added. Anybody want to add any of the, uh, any new technologies um, to, to this? Voice, I think I added phone before, like call, telephone. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good one, right, the AI. Uh, voice recognition. Uh, all that type of stuff. I saw this ad on Facebook. I don't know if you guys have seen it about, uh, it's a dating, 3D dating. So two, they will match two people. They don't see each other uh, directly. And they put these um, uh, Oculus on them. And they just meet each other for the first time face to face using the 3D technology. So they see each other in 3D face to face. They could interact with each other. They can actually dance. They hook them up with all these weird wires and stuff. Uh, that's been going viral right now on Facebook, if any of you are still on Facebook. Um, but that's probably, you know, the wearables. Wearables are the next generation of marketing. You, you might want to put it on the right side, just like... Yeah. yeah. Can we call it wearables? Uh, uh, probably wearables, right? That you will wear constantly. Yeah, right? I think Comes, comes the day where we're going to be walking on the street and everybody's wearing these 3D, uh, you know, the 3D um, augmented reality. Snap did that, I think, with their Oculus and their glasses. And if, if you guys uh, like um, evolution, that these are called eyes now, right? So <laughs> maybe somebody engineered us in the past to have eyes as our goggles and they just became eyes, right? So now we have eyes on top of eyes. Anyways, <clears throat> so these are some of the some of the trends of uh, by usage. So you have content marketing, still a big uh, channel. Big data, automation is huge because it plays around a lot of this stuff. Uh, social media is still there, uh, comes forth. Mobile marketing, so that's a cool chart. I just put it in there for, uh, for you guys because I'll provide this presentation for you afterwards. How about the future? Where do you guys think we're headed? And I know that's iPhone 10, but uh, I couldn't find a better, better gimmick. What, what do you think the future of marketing is? AI bots. The AI bots, cool. I think uh, people will be, the personal brand will expand. Uh, everyone's going to have uh, referral links. You know? mm -hmm. So we already do this naturally. We already refer, right? whether we do it consciously or not. Mm -hmm. right? Like I have a preference of Bob and Water, for example. But we're going to monetize that. It's going to get, you know, your Facebook is going to have your Fully integrated yeah. into yeah, into your right. platform. Yeah. Interesting. I think it's going to be mostly opt out too. I mean, for the most part, your world is available to you constantly. Like, Google Calendar will just know, search all the events, you know, but that's not necessary. And you'll just put a lot of calendar. I won't have to interact with him. Just mm. do what phone chat do. I mean, I think. Uh, we, I think AI uh, is so powerful, we don't even know that we're using it. Uh, but it, it, we're using it all over the place, even if it's a Google search and start spelling stuff and 
you made a mistake, that's AI at work saying, hey, did you mean that? Mm -hmm. uh, so AI, uh, I think is gonna be a huge, huge, there's a lot, in, you know, I just heard there was a big initiative on Watson, mm -hmm. uh, and they're putting into spe uh, specialized AI for healthcare and for security. Uh, but I think both well, bots will be working with AI, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's basically where the future is going to be, between mm -hmm. VR, AR, and AI. Cool. Anybody else has ideas about the future of, uh, of marketing when it comes to... AI is basically going to make the industrial future look like nothing. So I was at a lecture recently at Stigler University in Financial Finance, several months ago, and one of the lecturers just said, well, AI is going to change everything. I mean, it showed like a, a candle and said, oh, like, the industrial revolution has on-demand electricity, and what happened, they showed like a candle, which was a light bulb. Mm -hmm. They showed like a hand drill, which was a power drill. And these are like major things that happened, you know, like uh, gas, the, the car, basically, you know, works through a car. And he goes, AI is going to have a huge profound effect on how companies do business and act like my job as business development at a major, huge company is going to be irrelevant. Because like you, you call up now and you get a credit card and it's like a late system. You know, for, you can call, say your account number can't even hear you. Try calling Samsung now. The, two years ago I called Samsung and I was like, wow, I was impressed. And I called Samsung like last month. It took me like 40 seconds to realize I'm talking to a lot. And that's going to get better and better gradually, not like overnight, until you don't realize what happened where you know, calling row one in Manhattan, it's going to be like an AI talking to you. Yeah, but to your point, the curve is going to go this way because there's so much data points right now. There's so much use well, cases. Yeah, because uh, before there were some people not using the data. The, 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 right now, I'm, my mom, who's 83, is using, is going on Facebook and putting stuff up. You know, uh, there's so much data, but it's so much use uh, and that big data that we were growing is growing exponentially right now, and that's going to change the way that AI works, because all AI is is just software. And it's it's, pre it's predicting people and, and looking at the data sets, right? And the more data you have, the more the, the better results it's gonna be. My question mm -hmm. though, to you is when, what happened to the self-aware? Let's say 2042. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ray Kurzweil says, 2042 is there's, there's a lot of predictions in the space. Um, th so they say that this is, uh, we're living in a tetrahedron world right now. And just like you have the pixel on the screen, this 3D reality we're in, there's actually, it's made of tetrahedronic yeah. pixels. Uh, and we could be just um, a simulation of right. some sort. We are self-aware. They all say now, like Peter Diamandis and Ray Kurzweil, they're looking at it. They can't go past 10 years. We're still talking 50 years from now. It's going to be all augmented. It's going to all be augmented in network. So telepathy right now is being worked on. Uh, and it's almost in production. It's very slow. But real telepathy. Being able to, uh, to understand and feel what the other person is feeling. It's like actual feelings. Because they have uh, certain things that they put into the eye. Yeah. I was in there. Uh, I was actually one of the... Uh, I don't know if you ever seen the Mind Gamers. Uh, I'm not a gamer, mm -hmm. but uh, I was in this uh, studio audience where during that had a live transmission of the movie, and each one of us had um, I don't know your picture, but uh, <laughs> it, they had uh, a, like a band that connected to our brain waves mm -hmm. and uh, collective collective data, collective sets of data. We were watching the movie at the same time, LA and New York. Uh, there was probably about 800 people in one uh, audience mm. uh, and about maybe 500 people in LA. And they were getting our reactions, they were getting our beats from our brain and see how we, how we felt during certain parts of the movie. Mm. And then we kind of did like a little game where we concentrated on with, uh, with our minds to push visually a circle, mm. and so did LA. And because they were a little bit less, we were New York one. But you see this type of collective interaction mm -hmm. through your mind. So there's going to be uh, a lot more... Um, Conscious marketing. 
Yeah, but the, self-aware honestly, marketing. Yes, yes, exactly. It, 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 and it's going that way because then you'll be able to go into a store and have that feeling of whatever that how you're going to taste this particular fruit or something or how you're going to feel in this dress right. and, or or whatever it is that. Color. I have I have a segment on that. Yeah, so that's cool. Sorry, okay. I didn't mean to no, no, it's, it's cool, man. I, I, I like this. And uh, I saw this thing where they, they uh, hooked up somebody's brain to a, a brain of a mouse, and whatever the guys think would zap the mouse's brain, certain parts of it. So go left, right, back, forth, certain things. So it was actually, uh, yeah, it's, it is the future. So conscious marketing. <laughs> they, already have, they already have, you could, you could type, I think. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, so for the evolution of marketing technology, because obviously everything we saw have some sort of a technology that fits it. Um, looking at the landscape from 2011 to 2017, I mean, things have gone a little bit out of hand. 2011, you had 150. 2017, you have about 5,000 different technologies. And this branches out from, you know, small sales enablement tool to an enrichment tool to perhaps a poll. Uh, to a marketing automation platform and I actually we are right here so in the grand if you look at that segment we are we are right here so you know obviously it's broken down by category you might have some SMS marketing you might have some additional stuff um, but how do you differentiate yourself which tool do you use as a marketer for your multi-channel campaigns and imagine you're using at least 10 to 15 of these tools, which a lot of companies here are I'm assuming I'm do, are doing, maybe it goes really out of hand. And this is what starts creating uh, logistical nightmares. Right. And this is why multi-touch marketing has evolved. Uh, you know, you have so many different channels of communications, so many different channels of publishing. You also have analytics and data that needs to be aggregated. Uh, you have costs associated with each, you have the training processes. So, you know, the, the core of multi-channel is, um, or the definition of the multi-channel is targeted communication with your audience, uh, mainly I would say targeted, <clears throat> across multiple channels, multiple platforms, and devices. That's the short definition of what uh, multi-channel marketing is. And from that, there are actually two branches. So the first branch they call multi-channel, meaning you can have somebody go into a store and they purchase something and there's no tech, tech interaction. They can go online, they can buy something online and it's a completely disconnected experience. And then you can have the, somebody making a phone call and there, there's really a disconnect, although they're using the same channel, cha I mean channels from the same brand, they're just interacting with them differently. There's a slight disconnect between them. And then you have the omni-channel marketing where that actually serves brick and mortar. And there's multiple integrated uh, channels. So you go to the store, they put your system, your in front of C, uh, in their POS system, it goes into their profile. They buy online, it goes into their profile. They open a support ticket or return, it goes into uh, the three or all the different channels of communications. Uh, so omni-channel includes online, offline, and it's more interconnected while multi-channel can be just mainly um, you know multi-channels and there could be some disconnect so there are actually it's category in between which i'm not gonna dive deep into it uh, which is a multi-channel but more of integrated uh, at the lower scale which are some of the uh, smaller companies will use and i'll discuss on the channel and a case study uh, coming down so how do you get started if you have you know you're launching a new business and I think you can probably uh, help help a little bit with the uh, with this. Uh, but starting out a multi-channel campaign, or starting out any campaign for that matter, from the marketing perspective, how do you even get started? There's so many things you can be on, right? Uh, just to throw some, let's assume, uh, and I just took a few from everything you saw before. Let's say you have email, phone, SMS, push. I mean, where do you where do you get started? How do you guys work with uh, with new businesses? So you create a persona or a couple of personas for that business, right? Okay. Um, so identifying where the customers are so you can identify the channels you need to be in 
on. Interesting. Um, well, you know, like, there's going to be a certain time when someone is, is like, and it's on their mind, right? Mm-hmm. So I would want to delve into like, that situation. So it's identifying where people would be, the persona would be. Because every channel you see here has its own associated tools that comes along with it. So although it looks like you can do everything, but you probably witnessed this, there's, it's impossible from a company with a small budget even with a big budget, to come and just take on this entire, the entire thing, right? So, mainly I would say identify. Go ahead. Yeah, just to add on to that, um, just also the, the customer buying journey, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're thinking about what they want and what they don't want. And so, I think that when you have a So, uh, I mean, that's, you know, I'll just give a quick example, you know, I, because when we started, we wanted to do everything, and we did try everything, and we got overwhelmed, and soon enough, we realized that some of the stuff are just not going to work. Um, so, from the get-go, we realized, all right, these are the things we're going to focus on, but that's just the top or high level. Let's, let's get organized and, and draw a little journey for how things can happen. So, in our case, we might start with the phone where we have an inbound sales team. So the way, this is only one of the channels. So we have the social ads and we're pushing out content. We have the paid ads where we're getting some traffic to some of the social and some random paid ads on, on Google. And we also have our sales team who's doing prospecting and outbound call setting or appointment setting. So it starts here. And you know the next step would be after these interactions to drive in them somewhere. So where we take them to the website, engage them to the live chat. So again, every, every one of these is a completely different tool, completely different uh, management and, and, and planning altogether. And then from here, you know, taking any of these traffic from the web, how do you get them to opt in to an email uh, pop-up? Or maybe uh, if they don't want to engage with chat, how do you get them to subscribe to you know, an upcoming webinar? And this is where some of the magic happens as well, like automating some of the pop-up or messages. And from there, you know, take them to an automation once they give you that piece of data. And some of that automation here can be maybe retargeting and going back to the first, the first part of things. Uh, or you can go ahead and funnel them through a sequence of emails, uh, maybe feed them some videos. And now it's the age of personalized videos. You're probably going to see that in the next couple of years where I can send you an email with a completely custom branded personalized video that includes your name and your information and perhaps even your photo within that video. That's something uh, really cool that uh, is being worked on. Or maybe send them some review sites to establish some, uh, uh, or, or links to review sites, either to leave you a review or to read some of the reviews being, uh, being submitted. Send them back to a different automation that's going to send your data to a CRM. And perhaps even repeat the entire cycle together for those who did not convert, right? So, and this can vary. So elements can change between every single level. And We've seen businesses, and maybe you can back me up on this, a business in general might have about five solid different journeys that plan out after X amount of time. Like, this might look infinite to some extent, um, but eventually, like, we realize that this is really the best path where we're getting traffic, we phone them through the web, some automation, and eventually they, they convert. So three to five different potential paths. And the reason this is, this is important is because you want to set your expectation right. Because uh, 
sometimes you might toss out two or three different samples and you might have to restructure things around. And so from a planning, organizing perspective, and just mapping out that journey, just like you said, to what is the first touch from the channels that we chose, how do you walk them through, and what is the actual process. <clears throat> now mind you, in between, when I say automation here, there could be multiple sequences of email, it could be retargeting, uh, abandoned carts, it could be uh, blog nurture, or somebody signed up or downloaded something and then you're sending them follow-ups, it could be a whole bunch of things in, in between. Uh, so the second part is, uh, is the, from the planning is realizing you know, the devices your customers are going to be on. Are they going to be on a phone, on a tablet, on a PC, and the average person is using four to five different devices. So obviously, if you're targeting messages, you want to fine-tune your messages to be adaptive to these different devices. And now, if you use anything, it has to be inherently responsive. And if you're targeting the wearables, like you know, um, smart smart watch, then it's it's a completely different animal altogether. The operating systems that you use. And ironically, in email campaign, you have to probably run about 10 different tests on different email clients to make sure that they're looking up correctly. Right, and agencies that use us, for instance, they charge their clients sometimes $500 to $1,000 per email to do cross-device testing and cross-browser uh, testing. So you might have Outlook installed locally on your computer uh, Outlook 2013 renders differently than Outlook 2016, and the list can go on, right? So that, that's a completely different uh, process. And then finally, you have the segmentation where you can have the geolocation, the firmographic detail. Um, you might have uh, the psychographic uh, details of the, of the company's language, intent, and so on. So these are some additional things to consider beyond just the, the mapping of the journey. Uh, and in our case, for instance, we're targeting a couple of the demo uh, different demo geolocations. Like in Latin America, we have certain content tailored in Spanish. And then here we have, obviously, the content uh, fully in, in English. Finally, some of the mistakes you probably need to avoid is poor planning. That's why figuring out a few simple paths uh, initially and drawing out those few potential journeys are critical. Having this joint campaigns that do not communicate together, and we still, until today, we try to patch things that do not necessarily communicate properly. Like your CRM has to, has to communicate with everything that you've seen there. So you pull up somebody's profile, and you can see, you can see uh, the referral campaign they came from, uh, who made that call to book the appointment, how many emails they received, how they engaged with that email. And if that data is not something you're using today, most likely, once those predictive layers and, and analytics and AI is going to roll out in the future, we're going to depend on that full set of data. Because like we're building something in the predictive sphere where we create different uh, profiles on different people. So for instance, we know that on Thursday between uh, 6 and 10 p.m., uh, uh, people who are in the East Coast most likely uh, will make buying decisions if their mouse movement around the add to now bu uh, cart button uh, is in a certain pattern, right? So you can take all these huge sets of data, analyze it, and try to predict a little bit if this person will most likely buy or not. And then from there, maybe rearrange or hide certain messages on the screen to restrict what the person see to enhance the buying process. That's, that's the future, uh, one of the future of marketing where we see it. Um, obviously, using too many tools has become a nightmare, and it's still a nightmare until today. Uh, using the wrong communication, and sometimes we make mistakes. We send a message to somebody who already signed up to the platform of they should have signed up. It happens. But just figuring out that it's happening, controlling it is probably definitely key. And the poor optimization process. Nobody gets it right from the first time. And I don't know with you guys, how many times you have to go through iterations before you get it right, or at least fine tune it to the right place. Exactly. And I think with, uh, with multi-channel campaigns, you 
I, I associated with the chaos theory. Do you guys know what the chaos theory is? Like the weather. They say the weather is so complicated to predict that actually you can have a butterfly waving its wings and just that impact of the air coming out from her wing or its wing can impact the entire ecosystem. So the chaos theory is just way too many things to predict in order for you to know the weather exactly precisely and this is why one day it's raining, one day it's not and the weather was completely wrong, right? The weather power forecast. So anyway, so in some extent, omni-channel marketing, multi-channel marketing is not 100% accurate when it comes to the prediction side of things, right? Um, it's, it's pretty cool. So chaos theory, predictive, uh, self-conscious marketing, that's the future. Uh, so quickly, some of the benefits. How many of you can throw in some benefits for organizing and, and, and getting that multi-channel campaigns uh, running? Who wants to throw some benefits our way? Go ahead. I, I need to have a, a lot of money. <laughs> um, I like the, uh, the, the, uh, the backup you get for decision making. Mm. So where you know, in the past it may have been a guess or a really educated guess, you can have some data to back you up now. Exactly. So you can say you know, quantifiably, this is the case. This mm. is So, exactly, and some sometimes just companies are dumping money in the wrong in the wrong uh, channels, right? They they're like, let's just put you know fifty thousand dollars on social media, and the next thing you know, it's actually that core uh, campaign where they posted some comments, bringing them the best results, um, and because the multi-touch meaning is stretching across, it's not maybe today, and if you're buying a pillow, it might be in the next two days you make a decision, but if you're buying a car then you have so many different, the life cycle is completely different. You're engaging a lot more. For instance, right now, my, my car lease is expiring. I got contacted through email, through telephone, through flyers, through competitors. Um, I mean, next thing, I'm, I'm afraid to go to my car because I'm, I'm expecting like a sales guy to pop up on my dashboard, you know? Um, but the, the cycle for that is long, and thus they started contacting me six months ahead. Right, so my, it's going to expire in six months. Um, so a lot of the things you know, from, from the benefits, obviously you can have greater, richer data set that you can make better decisions on. Um, you can have better control, so everything is mapped out versus just complete chaos. Um, increasing in sales because sales is part of the process, right? Multi-channel marketing is going to transfer over to sales. So you can bridge the silos a little bit between sales and marketing by deploying multi-channel campaigns by getting some of that marketing data, sending it over to sales, and then the sales get the feedback and send it back to marketing uh, using some tools and techniques, of course. Um, and, and targeting the right customer at the right time. So if you ask any consumer, right? We are mainly marketers, but if you speak to consumers and you ask them, what, how would you like to be marketed? What do you guys think they will, they will say? Please don't, but they know it's inevitable, right? <laughs> That's a, um, but I mean, technically, they'll tell you, just give me, uh, just serve me the ad that I'm interested in. That, that's, that's number one. Just personalizing, like, I, I, I'm looking for jeans, or let's say I'm looking right now for um, a non-electric espresso maker. And the decision-making process became so much harder for anybody to buy anything because so many choices. And do you know how it is? The more choices you have, the more problems you create. So for me, I would love for an ad to just be so perfect for me that it's going to tell me, all right, these are the three ads you need to look at when it comes to the best coffee making, whatever devices you can, you can look at. Mosquito, let's talk afterwards. <laughs> um, anyway, so let's take a case study. And um, Sure. Exactly. So that's, that's part of the fine-tuning and attribution is big for, I mean, 
is the is the first touch. So there there's a couple of things. There is the first referral, and then there's the ongoing referral. So what was the first referral that got this person to know about you? And then what are the consequent referrals that happen in order for this person to buy? The multi, so the first degree referral and the multi-degree referral. And that's important because each one of them have completely different ad spend. For example, uh, the first multi-touch might cost me 60 bucks for somebody to click and land on my pages. But the subsequent referrals can be an email campaign that's costing me nothing if I you know, divide 10,000 emails by, by the cost that I did, so a few cents. Uh, other interactions that might happen, like in a push notification, um, or maybe a um, you know, call, automated call. Right now we can even personalize calls. That's, that's pretty cool. So you can have an automated personalized call. We're adding that on a journey because Amazon rolled out their AI layer. Anybody here use Amazon? Use Amazon? Calling is, I mean, there, there's different discussions on outbound calls. The spoofing? No, spoofing has been long for a long time. But calling, <laughs> I don't know if. Yeah, there are apps for that, yeah. That definitely helps. Built-in function with the. Uh, yeah, I think maybe a, a, like a, a, um, a carrier service. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. My cell phone. I, I actually work for a company that does IVR, so they, they, uh, they actually um that part of the monthly channel experience for customer service and attention and all that is very important. I agree. Um, one thing they do is they uh the the automated responses that they can time the withdrawal. Crazy stuff happening. I mean, so, so the outbound calls and, and automated calls is one of these things where some companies say, we don't want, this is dying. Nobody wants to pick up their phone anymore. But it's more of a customer service idea. Sure. So you call the bank and you have, you have to deal with the, the AI, right? Mm -hmm. You just have to. There's no way, there's no way around it now. Zero is a not working anymore. Mm -hmm. so if, you have to deal, if you have to deal with it. So since you have to deal with it, they're going to try to make it as pleasant as possible. And it's, it's great because actually uh, I remember uh, about a year ago where United rolled out their automated calls. I picked up and they're like, oh, this is Richard. We match your phone and we realize that you have a flight in X hours and your flight is on time. and. Uh,
their survey tool? Quote well, check, yeah. yeah. So survey monkey and the quote trick. The quote trick. This quizzer, I thought of quote tricks. I should look into it. Their survey tool? Quote well, check, yeah. Yeah. So survey monkey and the quote trick. Quote trick. There isn't anyone that is doing the same exact thing with the social platform that we have, social network platform, plus the uh, fun tools that we're providing to companies. There, nobody's doing it simultaneously. But uh, I would say Playboss is a big one uh, because uh, Qualtrics, this quizzer I thought of Qualtrics, I should look into it. Their survey tool? Qualtrics, yeah. Yeah. So survey monkey and the there isn't anyone that is doing the same exact thing with the social platform that we have, social network platform, plus the uh, fun tools that we're providing to companies. There, nobody's doing it simultaneously. But uh, I would say Playboss is a big one uh, because uh, Qualtrics, this quizzer I thought of Qualtrics, I should look into it. Their survey tool? Qualtrics, yeah. yeah. So survey monkey and the quote trick. There isn't anyone that is doing the same exact thing with the social platform that we have, social network platform, plus the uh, fun tools that we're providing to companies. There, nobody's doing it simultaneously. But uh, I would say Playboss is a big one uh, because they do provide their clients um, with fun ways, which they have some things that we don't. We have things, things that they don't, like the Joseph, for example. Um, I would say they was because their social presence is also high on their own Facebook and Twitter. Uh, other than that, I uh, but it's a subscription type of model that they have. Um, so those are the main ones that I know of. Why are you concentrating in the US market if you have it? I'm sure you have a lot to grow in the future. Um, yeah, I'm sure Turkey will grow further, and we have plans to extend into Europe and Asia also, but US is where everything happens. Where it begins, where you have a, a, a solid surgeon uh, in, in your country, right? In Turkey? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. We're very well known amongst the uh, highest circulating newspapers, banks. Um, it's penetrating the US market with a, with a product, I mean, uh, which is, you know, it's, it's a very useful product, right? But uh, there's a lot of players on the market. I, you know, I don't know them, but I'm There are, no, definitely. Uh, we are unique in Turkey, but you're right, we have competition here. Um, but we're establishing partnerships already. We're, we're um, doing the same exact thing we did in Turkey um, to create our social platform and create that user base, millions of people, and, and building partnerships with uh, publishers. Like, we're knocking on doors, every door we can find. So a lot of players in this space have this business model where they sign people up and then they show us I mean, it's a great question. And every person that's coming to use our app, some of them are just coming to send emails. They want uh, not compliance uh, and they want uh, to know where are your procedures for security measures, uh, how do you uh, back up your data, how do you separate your data. It's just part of what people are concerned about, although most of them, I don't want to say system administrators because they're great, but a lot of companies don't know 
that even though you can have these things in place, you can get hacked. I think a lot of people are worried about the, you know, the, 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 the beginner hacker that can just automate certain things and get into your system. So they ask for the, these basic compliance. And I'm pretty sure um, Neiman Marcus, to some extent, they have these figured out because um, they, they ended up going with, uh, with the Oracle retail suite. And I don't know if you guys know, but it's not like they spend $100,000 on this. They're, they're, they're probably spending, it could be anywhere from 20 to $100 million to implement their full digital omni-channel campaign. So they would use their POS systems, they would use their um, you know, CRM, they would use their customer management, their e-commerce platforms. So everything you would see is really going to be in Oracle Suite. And this is where like, the big money is for, um, for these omni-channel uh, consultants and uh, implementation specialists. <clears throat> So for, I, I, I think it's one of the suites, but not at, uh, maybe at a different, at a different level. Um, Eloqua, Eloqua is like a borderline between the mid markets and it could be integrated with Omnichannel. I don't think, I don't think it, I mean, it can operate as a stand as standalone uh, solution, and I, I'm pretty sure they could integrate it with these with these channels as well. Exactly, and and. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting because Salesforce did this a lot, right? And the big, the major issue with that is that not only you need a consultant, the implementation by itself is a huge, uh, it's a huge process. Mm. Consultants and a lot of issues, but I know company uh, people who work for companies that do implementation for uh, for companies like Neiman and Marcus on the omni-channel space, and they just say there's so many different issues, there's so many different components, and so much unnecessary work that you might find like an innovative company right now that might offer the suite at a lot cheaper, a lot more, um, if you want more streamlined uh, way of doing it. And then they had the other, the other part, which is the fine, uh, snap, fine, and shop. I think they rolled it out. For uh, you, dressing is an art form, an expression of creativity. So when you see a style you love, don't let the moment get away. Just snap, find, and instantly shop for it on the Neiman Marcus app. Now you can take a picture of any item that captures your eye. From shoes and handbags to dresses and accessories, we'll find a match. Take a picture at a party, in a magazine, or choose a pic directly from your camera roll. With Snap Find Shop, your photo will be matched to the style you can't live without. Snap Find Shop by Neiman Marcus. Download the Neiman Marcus app on the Apple App Store. You know, again, so the main purpose here was how do you merge that personal, you know, you got to be their physical experience of touching product and interacting with the product to a digital world, which is, which is where we're headed. And they want you to buy, right? If you don't buy from them, they'll be out of business. So what is the most efficient way to make a purchase is to have you establish a relationship with the product or with the products you want to buy. And I think they did a great job with their campaigns. It was a big hit. Not only that it was a big hit, it, took, uh, it had a lot of PR and, and downloads just by having coverage on, on this. Uh, so I thought Neiman Marcus was, great, uh, was a great case study. Now, of course, they probably have additional stuff that from their support standpoint and the ticketing and the returns, and they all tie in with the same Oracle platform. 
So these are just uh, to kind of close up some of the tools available that I think are important for multi-channel campaigns. Uh, set segment is a, is a great tool. It doesn't really need uh, big spending or anything. It's uh, you know, a few dollars you can get your data patched from different systems. It's definitely a great solution for people using different, different tools. Uh, Zapier is a great, another great solution. It's not as advanced from the technical side, um, but you can definitely connect things at at least the basic level. Um, Telium is an omnichannel data connector and that comes to attribution. So what they did is they created a tagging system that work from the store to the web to the mobile app and they could actually attribute certain purchases accordingly. It's more of a uh, they have a couple of suites, but it's, it's a great tool for attribution, tagging, uh, and things like that. Uh, Salesforce, everybody knows them. They have so many different products. We go on enterprise. Uh, they're complicated to set up. You need a consultant, and you better be ready for to have your team, marketing team, fully emerged and just the technology by itself. AppMixer is a new drag and drop alternative to Zapier. A new new company. I like their interface for matching different data together. And obviously, we I have to self promote because we put this together. So uh, we offer multi multi uh, channel campaigns, and we cover different activity from social, email, uh, landing page, web interactions, and we tie them together into major uh, user profiles. Um, and there's obviously tons of tools, but I just laid out a few examples for you guys. Um, hopefully, you'll. Uh, You'll find them. You'll find them helpful. So uh, I think this is it. Anybody has any questions? Great. Well, thank you guys for coming out. Um, again, it was was a nice little, little meet up. Usually we have uh, three times uh, three times people, but uh, and I think if I see you guys next month or the one after, uh, you'll. Uh, you know, you'll see the different synergies will, will differ. So thank you guys for coming out. Appreciate it. Thank you.